All right, so section 6.1 is entitled Graphing Linear Equalities in Two Variables. Uh, we just got finished doing the example, um, balancing the two part-time jobs, and so we kind of had some uh, exploration of that. Um, if you take a look over here at these ones on the side, these would be inequalities here that are in two variables, x and y. Okay, So just take a moment to take a look at those, and I want you to answer this question. For which inequalities is the values 3, 1, um, a possible solution. Okay, so you guys have B and C um, work out there. So let's just let's just see. So obviously this point is uh, x value of three, y value of one, right? So if we take a look at A, let's just rule that out. Thirteen minus three times what's the x value? Three is what is this less than or greater than this symbol? Okay, I heard one greater, th greater. okay, yeah, it's greater than. You always read from left, left to right. And when I was in elementary school, this is what my teacher told me, you know, envision this as a crocodile, okay? And the crocodile wants to eat more food. So this is greater over here. Is that brilliant or not? Oh, you did Pac-Man, oh. Pac-Man, see, yeah, video kids. Pac-Man, that's before you're even alive, wasn't it? Pac-Man, you guys really, you guys know about Pac-Man? Okay, so just like this then, Pac-Man. I know it doesn't have teeth, but it's hard for me to erase the teeth, okay? I know Pac-Man, I know it doesn't have teeth, okay? Give me a break. Hey, I was actually alive when Pac-Man was like invented. Oh, there we go, I got rid of the teeth. So I'm like 60, no, I'm not like 60, no. no. I'm a little less than 60, thanks. But good guess. <laughs> yeah. All right, just take it easy on the old teacher here, okay? All right. What's three times three? Thirteen minus. Somebody say four. Seriously. That is four. Thirteen minus nine is what? It is four. Okay. Is that greater than four? No. No. It's equal to, so you're right, this one A does not work. Okay? All right, so let's, without writing it down, let's just uh, do this real quick. So 2 times 1, that's 2 minus 5 is negative 3. Is that less than positive 3? Yes, so good, B works. Um, 1 plus 3 is 4. Is that less than 10? Yes, okay? So why is 1? Is 1 greater than or equal to 9? No, okay. So very good, so B and C. Everyone can see that? Okay, so are there other solutions? So my question is, are there other solutions? Is there another point that would make this true? Right here, is there another point? Or is there only one possible solution here? What do you think? Well, this has to be less, right? Okay, so what if I had a negative value for y? and I had some positive value for x. Do you see how if this was a negative term and we subtracted more, it's going to be really small. And so if I had this term on this side being a positive, it's always going to be less than. Right, see that? So we could have negative 5, negative 10, negative 100, negative 1,000, and x could be anything that's positive. So do you see, do you see how there's a lot of different possibilities for an inequality? Okay. If it's an equation, there's just one. If it's an inequality, there's a whole range of possibilities. Yes? This is baby stuff, right? This is pretty easy? Okay. All right, that's good. I'm glad I'm, I'm, glad I'm way beneath you. That's good. Okay, so solution set. Um, you need to know this. Solution set is a set of all possible solutions. So in an equation, the equation, you're probably just going to have one. Okay, um, with this, if it's a straight line equation, anyways, you'll just have, you know, one solution probably. But in inequality, hey, turn around. But in inequality, you have a number of poss possible solutions. That is called a solution set. Okay, set of solutions. All right. The other thing we need to talk about here, um, the solution set. If it is continuous, we're talking about numbers that are, you know, positive, negative, decimals, everything. Um, if a decimal answer or an irrational number is a possible solution, then the solution set is uh, continuous. 
Okay, so what does it say? A connected set of numbers in a continuous set there is always another number between any two given numbers. Continuous variables represent things that can be measured, such as time. So continuous set. In the previous example that we did in the getting started, the girl only wanted to work whole hour increments, right? That's not a continuous set. She cannot work, you know, 5.77 hours at a certain place. It's only whole number hours. That was, that's what, how that was set. So that is not continuous, okay? Her, uh, the number of hours for each uh, job, okay, is not an element of all real numbers. That's what this means. X is an element of all real numbers and Y is an element of all real numbers. Can be anything, positive, negative, decimal, zero, rational, irrational, anything. So the other, um, uh, the other possibility is discrete. And I'm just going to fast forward here to where it talks about discrete. Sorry, yeah, right here. So consisting of separate or distinct parts. So if she wanted to know how many hours she could work at, at each job and she only wanted to work whole number uh, increments, then the inequality might look something like this where there's a whole bunch of different options, but they only exist at you know where the lines on the coordinate plane cross. She can't work decimals, can't be in between, it has to be on the button there. Okay, so separate, distinct parts, discrete variables represent things that can be counted, such as people um, in a room and stuff like that. Okay, so continuous and discrete. Okay, just to round off this lesson, let's get to the, uh, the key ideas, and I think there's some graphs here. Okay, so let's talk about this a little bit. Um, for the most part, this is, uh, we're going to talk about this for a few minutes. Um, some parts I'm going to disagree with here and not make you do, but some parts I will. So the key idea for this section, when a linear inequality in two variables is represented graphically, its boundary divides the Cartesian plane into two halves. So, again, in the getting started uh, video that we did, uh, the lesson that we did just before this, uh, we talked about those numbers of hours of work, and we came up with an inequality that looked like uh, this right here, okay? this inequality right here. And so if that is graphed, <coughs> and in two variables it would be like here x, y. If it was graphed, it's going to be graphed on the Cartesian plane or the coordinate plane there. And there's going to be some kind of distinction boundary that is the equation of the line. So let's just do another example here real quick. So if you have, it's kind of messy. Let's say we have this one, y equals x, okay? This is the y equals x line. If I change this to y is greater than or equal to x, now we're talking about something different. So now we're either talking about this half underneath the line, or we're talking about this half on the other side of the line. You see that? Now it's an inequality. So the solution set would contain points, x, y, on which half? Which side is the solution? The blue or the red? Because as that first point says, the line really that would be represented here is a boundary. So which points would make this inequality statement true? The red points or blue points? Blue? Okay, so let's test a blue point. Like negative 3, positive 3. That's, that would be in this region, right? So is that true? Um, the y is 3 and the x is negative 3. Does that make sense? It sure does. 3 is greater than negative 3. So if we test any other points in here, we would find that yes, the solution set would be this region. So remember, it's a region um, that we're, we're looking for. That's what that first point means. Okay. Now specifically, let's take a look at these diagrams here. Okay, so here is the boundary that would represent like the equation y equals negative 2x plus 5. That's where you start. What's the equation? That's your boundary line. And then if it's less than, you take some test points and you figure out which region uh, includes all the values that would count here. Now, if it's less than or equal to, so if you have an or equal to, then we have a solid line. Okay, because that means that the boundary is part of the solution set. If it's not or equal to, like this one right here, you see that? Then the boundary line would be like a dashed line. Okay? If x and y are, they belong to the set of all real numbers, then the region is completely shaded in like this. 
So every possible value in this region is a solution. If x and y are only elements of integers, then we're talking about these discrete points like this, okay? Just the points on the crosshairs of the coordinate plane. And if it con contains, like if the, the values are on the line, then you put the dots right on the line. Now, I, I'm not going to make you change colors in your textbook, okay? So you don't have to change colors. This one, um, uh, this the orange dashed line, I'm not going to make you do that. So solid or dashed, um, dotted, or I mean you can just make this one dotted too. I don't really, doesn't really, doesn't really matter. There is a distinction between here and here, but um, that's what that's all they do. But they say change colors too, so you can just do a uh, a dashed line here if it's not including the line just as the boundary, just like we did over here, and then fill in like the points would represent the the stipples they call them would represent the fact that the answers are only integers. Okay, all right. I know this lesson is a little bit dry, um, but understanding these graphs, how to interpret them, and how to draw them is uh, is the goal here. Okay. Questions? So let's do this one. Let's do 4x plus 3y is greater than or equal to negative 12. So let's say this is our inequality that we need to graph. Um, what we do is we start with the line. What would be the line? If this was equals, right, we need to sketch that first. Because it's greater than or equal to, uh, and we'll say that the uh, values for x are all real numbers. We're going to have a dashed line, right? No, we're going to have a solid line because it's or equal to. Good. Okay. So how do I uh, how do I find out where this line is or what it looks like? What's the easiest way to sketch this line? Um, you know, this is not in y equals mx plus b form. What should we, what should we do? You could turn it into y equals mx plus b form. Yeah, you could. You want to do that? Um, you're looking for x and y values that make uh, the equation true, right? That's what we're looking for. So if we wrote this as 4x plus 3y equals negative 12, and we did 3y equals negative 4x um, minus 12 divided by 3, we get this. Um, something like that, right? Right? We good? So that's the reason why, why it goes up close. So we could do that. Um, and then we have our intercept and so on. The other thing you could do without doing this is you could find the x and y intercepts. So the y intercept is where x equals 0. So we're x equals zero. So if we this is you don't have to rearrange this if you don't want to you just simply do this. Right? Oh, I guess we're doing equals. So really that's gone and 3y equals negative 12. What is y? Y would be negative 4. So our y intercept is negative 4. So you could go straight from this and you don't have to change it if you don't want to. And then of course uh, the next one would be for x plus 3 times 0 is negative 12. For x equals negative 12, and that's going to be what? Negative 3. So an x value of negative 3 is going to be on this line. Something like that. Okay. So there is your sketch. Now this is or equal to, so we said that boundary line is going to be solid. So you can just go ahead and draw that line. So that's the boundary line, okay? The equation, the boundary line, awesome. The final step then is to find out which region above this line or below this line would be part of the solution or would be the solution set. So is it above or below? It's above, okay. Let's test that out. Remember, zero, zero is clearly in one of these. So let's put a zero there and a zero there and we get zero is greater than or equal to negative 12. Is that true? Yes, it's true because it's a negative 12. So this is part of the solution set. So then your answer becomes this region here. Okay, any questions on that?